Good morning. Our Eucharist this morning is offered for Armando Cervi. <clears throat> and it's also being offered for Father David Bittner, who is having prostate cancer surgery this morning. At St. Angela Marici, Fathers Vince and Adriano are offering the Mass for Antoinetta and Luigi Saviero Rucco, for Domenico Mucciaccio and Antonio Di Meo. And the Mass at noon at St. Alphonsus today will be offered for Gerald and Rosemary St. Pierre, for Michelle George, and for Gerard Thomas. Our entrance antiphon, you are my God, and I confess you. You are my God, and I exalt you. I will thank you, for you became my Savior. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Sisters and brothers, today the church celebrates the feast of St. Thomas the Apostle. St. Thomas is known probably most for his confession of faith after Jesus' resurrection from the dead. He is also known as the Apostle to India. And so as we celebrate this Eucharist this morning, we pray in a special way for the people of India, especially so many of whom attend our parish that are students here in Windsor, and we ask for God's blessings upon them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We begin our Eucharist by calling to mind our sins and asking the Lord for pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. We join with the angels and the saints as we say, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may glory in the feast of the blessed Apostle Thomas, so that we may always be sustained by his intercession and believing may have life in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, whom Thomas acknowledged as the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. You are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In Christ, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple of the Lord to whom you are also are built together spiritually 
into a dwelling place for God. The word of the Lord. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Thomas, called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to Thomas, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe the Gospel of the Lord. How many of you, if you've ever expressed doubt about something, have had someone say to you, oh, don't be such a doubting Thomas. It's happened to me a couple of times. And it comes from this gospel passage right here, where we get that. That idea that Thomas sort of gets a bad rap because he doubted the resurrection. But I don't think it's as bad as we've made it out to be. Because in reality, what Thomas is saying when he expresses this doubt, after experiencing the trauma of Christ's crucifixion, and his passion and everything. And then hearing the apostles share this good news, he's not saying, I don't believe it at all. He's saying, I want to have the same experience that you've had. I want to encounter, I want desperately to believe, but for me to be able to do that, I need to be able to encounter the Lord in the same way that you have. Because if he just denied it outright, he would have left the other apostles altogether and he would not have been continued to be with them in the room or have been there the second time that Jesus appeared to the apostles in the upper room. And so great was Thomas's faith that when he saw the Lord, he gives us that beautiful expression, my Lord and my God. And in some ways, his faith went even beyond that of the other apostles, because John's gospel tells us that they rejoiced when they saw the risen Lord. But Thomas is the only one who is recorded making this bold profession of faith. And this is a profession of faith that we are called to make in our lives as well. Personally, I've had a devotion for several years of saying these same words of Thomas during the consecration, 
after praying the words of institution, or after hearing the priest pray the words of institution before I was a priest, as the host was elevated, making the same profession of faith, my Lord and my God, as an expression of our belief that Jesus is truly present in the Eucharist. So may Thomas's example of faith in our Lord be an inspiration for all of us as we seek to follow him faithfully and seek to carry out the will of God in our lives. And so, brothers and sisters, let us stand and profess our faith. I'm sorry, uh, offer our prayers and petitions to God. We pray for our church throughout the world, and especially on this Feast of St. Thomas, we pray for the church in India, that God will continue to bless and sustain the faith which St. Thomas carried to that country. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our civil leaders and our elected officials, we pray that during this time of pandemic, they may wisely guide their nations safely and make decisions that are in, in the interest of upholding the common dignity of all people. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all of those who are sick and suffering, for their families and friends, for healing for the sick, and for consolation and strength for their loved ones. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all of those who have died. We pray that the Lord may receive the souls of the faithful departed into his heavenly kingdom and may grant consolation to all who mourn. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the those for whom this Mass is being offered and for their intentions. We pray to the Lord. Let us take a moment to call to mind the intentions that we bring to this Mass in the silence of our hearts. For all of these, we pray to the Lord. Loving and gracious God, we ask you to hear the prayers that we make this day and to answer them according to your will, for we make them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We render you, O Lord, the service that is your due, humbly imploring you to keep safe your gifts in us as we honor the confession of the Apostle St. Thomas and offer you a sacrifice of praise. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you, eternal shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy and ministers of your church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Our communion antiphon, bring your hand and feel the place of the nails and do not be unbelieving, but believing. Let us pray. O God, as we truly receive in this sacrament the body of your only begotten Son, grant, we pray, that we may recognize him with the Apostle Thomas by faith as our Lord and our God, and proclaim him by our deeds and by our life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reminder both for those of you here and those of you watching online that we have resumed offering the Sacrament of Reconciliation. We've changed the time both here at Assumption and at St. Alphonsus. So at Assumption's confessions will be in Rosary Chapel beginning at 11 a.m. from 11 a.m. to noon on Saturday. And at St. Alphonsus, confessions will be from 3.45 to 4.45 on Saturday. Confessions will be held at St. Alphonsus in the office so that we can provide for physical distancing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.